What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build. Today we'll be taking a look at Asylum, I keep close to my heart. Asylum that's capable of bringing pure pain and terror onto those that are caught within this beam of death and revitalize itself like the Bram Stoker's Dracula. Today we're going to be using the Devil's Room Asylum and I'm going to show you how you can turn it from a mini death laser to a baby 1000 voices prototype. Many of you should be familiar with the build as it predates back to when the exotic was first introduced and since then it has had some usage in many of the activities in game. As of now I can see the side on picking up sway with the community thanks to the infinite ammo update that Bungie recently released and this miniature beam ability is quite powerful when used in the right environment. Now adding 2 and 2 together allows you to maximize this weapon special ability anytime and anywhere you like with little to no downsides involved. So I decided to build on this feature to create one of the hottest mixtapes to come out of the Hellmouth. The setup will allow you to use the beam attack on a repeated basis while receiving non-stop damage buffs, sunspots and elemental worlds in the process. It's so hot in fact that when fully stacked with damage buffs that weaken 1 to 2 shot champions once they become stunned, making it a great champion deleter when you need it. Sounds interesting? Great, as I have a lot more to cover within the build that I'm sure you'll make a note on. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. Starting off with the subclass, we will be using the Code of the Teach Breaker for the active use of Sun Invictus and Sun Warrior, both which will be important for the health and usage of the build. The ideal use of the build is to keep yourselves topped up via our abilities and to then use these abilities to create wells, sunspots and continuous damage buffs all around. Although sunspots are more designed for staying in one spot and making full use of them while rooted, we can create sunspots while on the go as long as we pass through one and net a kill with our weapons. This means that with the use of Sun Victus and Sun Warrior, we can consistently net kills and create sunspots at a rapid pace to which we can then use to garner more ability energy, health regeneration and weapon damage. For the Devil's Ruin, this is great as we will be having the Path of the Burning Steps and Elemental One mods active who will also be actively improving the weapon even more but also allows my other weaponry to have some use as well. Ideally, you want to focus your effort around the Devil's Ruin special ability as much as possible since that attack will net you the biggest damage around. But at the same time with how the mods and subclasses are set up, you can avoid using the Devil's Ruin completely and still do pretty well off. The main key to take away from the subclass is how powerful it can get once you get a sunspot or two up. Those ability regeneration coming your way are no joke and you can use them to have infinite firewalls at hand to which they will create wells via the Element Orders mod. Upon creating a well, collecting one can activate the Font of Might buff for a 25% weapon buff increasement for 10 seconds, which we can then stack on top of Firewalker for even more damage output. So as you can see, while you're getting non-stop ability energy, you are also getting continuous damage buffs which can easily take out the majority of Majors to Ultras in 1-2 hits. Very viable for Grandmasters if pulled off. For weapons, we know Devil's Ruin will be the play within the build, so how to maximize the last two slots will be down to needs and usage. Ideally, having a weapon with osmosis as a backup in case your secondary is out can extend the build further and allow you to carry on with keeping your stacks up and going. Alternatively, anything that can disorientate or be very reliable from the get go is also recommended. My primary for example is the Fatebringer hand cannon with Eye of the Storm and Osmosis and yes the role I have is bad since my luck in Rog is non-existent but that's not the point of today's video. Osmosis on any ability spanning build is going to make these sort of builds very flexible in how often you can activate certain abilities through them. Take the Elemental World mods for our solar subclass. If I wish to activate them, I will need to produce them via solar methods which of course we have that covered but in case of a scenario where I can't reload my devils in time I can switch to my fate bringer instead as long as I throw a grenade and have the elemental armaments mod active. These two are the main key points you have to take away when using them. Osmosis requires us to use a grenade to change its elemental type while armaments allows any elemental weapons after X amount of kills to produce a well on whim. With this I can use my primary to gain the ongoing solar buffs and keep Path of the Burning Steps buff going as long as possible since we now have an alternative way of doing so. Of course, Firefly can also help. Alternatively, Spoiler Alert, One Small Step and Server Leader are great choices as well. For secondary, we have the Devil's Rune Exotic Sidearm which will create and complete the build in its full entirety. As mentioned before, thanks to the recent patch, all primary weapons now have infinite ammo that you can use for all content and this in a way has buffed the majority of weapons that lack reserves or ammo from the get go. 
Devil's Ruin is no exception to the buff, and a special part called Close the Gap greatly benefits from this, as you can repeat the major blast as many times as you like. Considering how powerful it becomes when you add in mods such as Surprise Attack to the mix, the weapon improvements becomes unstoppable in a lot of content with Major or Ultra Combatants. For Heavy, I've chosen you the Canis Major Grenade Launcher with Clown Carjan and Vorpal Weapon, which is going to be very handy when up against mini bosses, bosses and champions alike. As a rapid fire weapon with 5 in the magazine, I can fire off a volley of rounds into a single target and destroy their health in a matter of seconds before needing to reload to the next patch thanks to the Vorpal Weapon's bonus. At the same time, as a solo, it can greatly benefit from the Path of the Burning Steps, Front of Might and Sunspots to further enhance damage for DPS phases, etc. The Grenade Launcher will have limited usage through most of the content, so if you are someone who is after a heavy that you can rely on more while using your Prime and Secondary all the time, I would recommend you use Archon's Thunder, a Iron Banner heavy machine gun with its large reserves and flexible purple, and it's also solar, which is great. For the stats, I have a lot of focus within the discipline style of the build, simply because this is the main area we'll be using the most out of all of our abilities. Although intellect will play a major part for the build as well, and strength will be handy when up close and personal, discipline is truly the only stat that will affect how often the build becomes buffed and how it will interact with the following subclasses. Because of how strong our ability energy recharge rate currently is, when in sunspots or collecting wells, you don't need to focus as much into the other areas as long as you have one key stat to aid you throughout. So in my example, I've aimed for 80 in Discipline, so we can garner grenades faster to produce wealth and sunspots as we go, which will all lead back to regenerating grenade ability again and repeat. To aid us with the regeneration, I've added in the Discipline mods to greatly improve the regeneration speed to reach the levels we are currently at, while also adding in the Impact Induction mod when we use our melee every now and then. Most importantly, the Elemental Ordnance mod will allow users to create wells upon grenade kills and will help you for pretty much 99.9% .9 of the content in game if you want to have a 20 second cooldown rate. Now everything as mentioned has been left how they are, as Discipline and some class ability regen will carry the rest, however we do have some points in them just to make the transition a bit faster. In terms of mods, we have the following that will play a major part for using Devil's Ruin or all of our weapons at once. We have the Surprise Attack mod that will provide a 35% weapon damage buff to our sidearm when active and is great when we want to overkill combatant but does not stack with any other empowering ability so do take that into consideration. We have the Front of Might mod for a 25% weapon buff to those that matches elemental value which is another great benefit to the user. We have the Elemental Armors mod for producing wells when we get a solar weapon kill and then we have the Wyvern Heat mod that weakens champions by 30% debuff when applied, which is great in any content involving champions as you can delete them a lot more faster. Except for overload captains, nothing can stop an overload captain. Now as we have covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For head we have intellect, grenade ammo finder and surprise attack mod. Arm we have minor recovery, impact induction and taking charge mod. Chest we have discipline, concussive dampener times 2 and elemental orders mod. Leg we have Maya Discipline, Sidearm Holster x2 and Front of Might mod. Mark we have Maya Discipline, 1 2 Finisher, Withering Heat and Elemental Armors mod. Interestingly, with the build, this setup allows your Sidearm to become a one man army against both combatants and players if you time your shots right and build up your buff as you go along. The best way to make the Devil's Room effective is to fire off all but one of your weapon's rounds and then activate your charge laser attack for a final KO via the charge beam attack. This in practice will allow you to build up your powerful burn step stacks, create wells and allow you to activate the front of might mod and overall allow you to create a sunspot in the meme run for a small but heavy hitting attack. Of course you can just activate the devil's room special attack there and then as you can just easily build up your stacks that way, but if you want to be efficient and net the highest amount of damage on a particular combatant then you want to maximize your shots and work your way up from there. This is pretty much what creates the highly dangerous build overall, as it's just as simple to understand as it is for activating it. Using this setup in Gambit for example can allow you to quickly take out defenders instead of relying on a fusion or shotgun to do the trick, and thus saves you a bunch of ammo. Alternatively, for Nightfalls, it's capable of ending many champions careers once they are stunned or simply when they're charging at you, since the damage available can easily take out a quarter, half or a full health there and then. You don't even need to have all your stacks available to be effective against targets like those, as weapon alone is pretty powerful in its own realm. 
I would also say its effectiveness can be stretched to boss DPS once you get your ongoing stacks flowing. However, this is only effective on bosses outside of the raid and grandmasters, unless you have some killer team build in mind. The overall appeal of the build will suit those that want to give Devil's Ruin a second try in game thanks to the infinite ammo buff and the season's anti-champions mods focus with a heavy emphasis on high single target DPS. However, the build does come with a downside of needing to reload after each charged attack, which we can circumvent via the sidearm holster mod, but this can still be issue when against a very well armoured combatant and you don't have a primary or heavy to rely on. You also have to take into consideration all the stacked buffs you have going and how you have to maintain them if you wish to get the best damage out of what's been offered. This is easier said than done as the higher the difficulty, the higher risk of death and less chances of keeping your stacks. Depending on how you play, you may become limited in some activities, depending. If you've got a good head and you know what to do, then you can take this build in and cause as much destruction as you like. But if you've got a slow reaction time and can't do high level content, then that's fine. The build is flexible and can be changed up to your liking to adapt to the rapid changes. The main thing to take away from the build is to have fun as we don't know if the infinite ammo change is a permanent change forever or could be potentially changed in the near future. But either way, I think it's best we use Devil's Ruin and incinerate everyone we come across, just saying. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep updated with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.